Hi, hello to all of you. Today we will uh, understand in short about vertigo and uh, mainly peripheral vertigo that, that is the ear uh, related causes of vertigo. Many patients suffer from this condition called as vertigo. Even patients use this term vertigo very loosely and vertigo is very commonly confused or interchanged with terms like dizziness, uh, blackouts, feeling heaviness. All these are common terms used by patients. So we need to be aware how to practically approach this patient of vertigo. Understand what actually balance um, controls this balance of the body. Common causes of peripheral or the ear onset vertigo and basics of management. I will not be going into extreme details, but basics of management will be covered. So this is the part of our ear. Ear has got external ear, middle ear, inner ear. The inner ear is mainly important for the balance and for hearing. And part of the inner ear is the semicircular canal present. Now these semicircular canals are mainly important to maintain the balance during angular movement. When our head is going into angular movement, these semicircular canals become active or they play a role and it is an interrelation between both ear semicircular canal. Similarly, this area, that is the vestibule area, which consists mainly of the utricle and the secule, are, uh, are mainly important to manage the linear movement. When we are walking in straight lines, the balance is maintained by the utricle and the secular area. And when we see this photo, our eyes are moving in a rhythmic fashion. And this movement of eye in rhythmic movement or oscillatory movement of the eyeball is typically called as nystagmus, which is seen in quite a few ear related conditions and even cerebral, cerebellar conditions. So nystagmus is an important sign that we should be seeing in patients who are having vertigo. So basically, uh, the balance is maintained because the position of the head and the body is sent to the brain. Now, this position of head and the body is, is because of three important causes. One is the vestibular causes. By the vestibular cause, we mean it is the ear or the inner ear related causes. Then there are visuals, visual uh, receptions. That is the coordination between the eyes and the ear called as the vestibulo-ocular reflex. And then there is proprioception, that is the position of feet. So position of feet by the vestibulospinal tract, they send the information to the ear and then ultimately information goes to the brain. So it is the coordination of vestibular, the visual and the proprioception and any misinformation which is sent to the brain will lead to imbalance. So a coordinated effort is required for to maintain the balance of the body. Now, when a patient comes uh, with dizzy or with vertigo, we need a very clear-headed approach to, 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 uh, to diagnose the condition and then treat the condition because a patient of vertigo is already extremely stressed. He would definitely have visited many doctors. He would have done a lot of Google search and with a lot of faith, he has come to you as a consultant. So it definitely is a diagnostic challenge, but our main aim is that we identify very quickly those cases which require emergency care, which may require hospitalization, which may require evaluation, which may require some injectables, identify those cases. Try to identify the location of the problem. Giving treatment is, symptomatic treatment is not the right way. Try to identify what exactly we are treating. So is it a brain or a central cause? Is it an ear that is a peripheral cause? Or there are certain other conditions like cardiac conditions, hypertension, diabetes. So it is important that we diagnose and then start our treatment. So this is the most important chart that when a patient says he is having dizziness, he is having giddiness, he is having vertigo, he is having chakkar, we need to ask him what exactly does he feel. If the history says that the patient typically says, I might faint, I am feeling lightheaded, I am, uh, and the symptoms are more on standing. It is mainly a blackout kind of thing. It is a syncope that we are dealing with. It is a postural hypotension, vasovagal syncope, not very, very serious condition. If patient says, I am having imbalance, that is like an alcoholic person who is having, uh, who is, uh, who moves in a, in an imbalanced fashion or a moves in disequilibrium, that is, we need to ask from the patient whether it is what kind of that it is imbalance that he is having. If it is imbalance, 
more or less we are dealing with a central cause that is a non ear cause and 10 percentage of these patients um, of the vertigo patients might be those which are of central cause when typically he says that everything is spinning things is things either the patient himself is rotating or the surrounding is rotating this is what is more important and this is what exactly we mean by vertigo and for and this is a ear related cause and understand friends 40 percentage of vertigo 40 percentage of these cases are because of ear cases what and so we need to be so as an ENT surgeon we need to be very very uh, and very very sharp in diagnosing these conditions so vestibular causes that is uh, a rotatory feeling and patient just give some vague history i am dizzy it can be because of anxiety depression psychiatric disorders and conditions also besides this there are some conditions uh, like uh, there can be um, hypotension there can be syncope sorry hypotension there can be um, uh, systemic conditions like low sugar levels there can be some cardiac conditions these also can lead to vertigo which we need to be careful about and in spite of knowing all this 10 to 15 percentage of patients are still we cannot diagnose exactly what is the cause of vertigo uh, it is important that you differentiate whether it is a brain and it is central cause or a ear peripheral cause understand peripheral cause or ear cause will be a sudden onset vertigo Ear, brain cause will be slow gradual onset peripheral will be severe brain or central cause will be ill-defined these are frequent these are infrequent there would not be any central signs in the ear onset of the peripheral vertigo in peripheral vertigo patient may may also have not always may also have ringing sound that is tinnitus or hearing loss and nystagmus also will give us if it is a horizontal nystagmus more likely it's an ear condition if it is vertical or a direction changing nystagmus we are dealing with the central cause of vertigo and the most important differential diagnosis will be in peripheral causes these three important conditions that is bppv meniere's disease and vestibular neuronitis there are other causes also but these three are the most important and majority of patients might be fitting into either of these three diagnoses of which we need to take a detailed history and detailed history should consist of how did it start tell the patient give the patient time let him describe the symptoms well ask him how long did it last probe how long did it last whether it was a seconds minutes hours and ask him whether it was very few seconds that did you experience dizziness episode before uh, whether he had previous similar episodes does he have any ear related condition and any other additional symptoms like nausea vomiting stress anxiety so most important thing is duration. If patient says that the duration of vertigo is sudden and for few seconds, say 10, 20, 30 seconds, and only either while sleeping or while getting up or with some neck position, either picking something from the shelf or while playing, neck movement, it is typically a benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Remember, if it's few seconds, we are dealing with BPPV. If it is few minutes to hours, we are dealing with meniere's. And few days the vertigo lasts, we may be dealing with vestibular neuritis. BPPV is the most common cause. Understand it is not dangerous. It is very, very stressful. And the good thing is it is very well treatable. It is a benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. In history, typically patient will give a history that it lasts for less than one minute and in few seconds, patient becomes completely all right. But those 20, 30 seconds would be everything spins and patient becomes very, very stressed and very, very scared or very, very panicky with tilting of head, with looking up, rolling on the bed, tying shoelaces, hanging clothes. All these are moments, neck movements, sudden neck movements can aggravate this condition. Patient may not have nausea vomiting. There is no, I repeat, there is no hearing loss, no tinnitus. And if patient takes basic medicines which are available over the counter like beta histine, these will not be very, very effective. So what, so what does it, why does it happen? I'm stressing more on this because it is the most common cause. Now, this is what we understand that these are the semicircular canals. This is the area uh, which we call as utricle, which contains some calcium carbonate particles. Now, these particles, because of certain reasons, it can be idiopathic, it can be because of minimal trauma, they start moving or circulating in the semicircular canals. They become free floating. And when position changes, they stimulate and patient starts having vertigo. So they are free calcium carbonate particles which are floating in the semicircular canals. 
And how do we diagnose? We take the patient, we put him in a specific position that is 45 degree down the bed. And if the patient gives a typical history of that kind of vertigo, yes, we are dealing with, uh, we call it a positive test and it is a confirmatory test for PPPV of that direction. Patient should get some vertigo or nystagmus when we have, when we bring him in that position. And what do we do? It is a simple Epley's maneuver. There are other two, three maneuvers which can be done by the ENT surgeon, but Epley's maneuver is the most commonly done by tilting the head in specific position. Mind you, if any patients are watching this, please don't try this at home because these positions always lead to some vertigo. I have seen some patients doing it, but each position can aggravate the vertigo temporarily. So don't try it at home. It is just one, uh, one, two to three minutes session which is required, and it is almost it can almost cure us from BPPV. A please maneuver can be done. This does not require any other exercises to be done at the home. A please maneuver or Simon's maneuver, either of them can be tried, and both are equally effective. This, this is what we do in a please maneuver whereby we change the position. Just keep a watch on the particle position. If you see, the, we want the particle to come back in the utricle. This is the position that is given to patient. It has come, it is fixed, free floating. We want it to come inside this. So we give this position. The second position will bring it to in the, in the other part where we take it 45 degree on the opposite side. And then we rotate the patient facing downwards. We'll bring it down. And then now when the patient sits, the, the, the calcium carbonate crystal has gone back in the position. This is what we do in the please maneuver. And second cause is vestibular neuritis. Remember, sudden onset vertigo. Patient says he was completely all right. Suddenly he started having vertigo and this vertigo is very, very worse. Lasting for longer duration. Patient has vertigo in all position. He will not be able to walk. He will keep lying down on the, in the bed with eyes closed. She will also have severe vomiting along with that. And this, in such condition, it is important that we rule out a stroke also. Most likely it is vestibular condition or ear condition, but a stroke needs to be, needs to be ruled out and maybe an MRI is advised in these conditions. So as we discussed, it is sudden onset, severe, prolonged vertigo for more than 6, 7, 8, 24 hours. The patient has movement of the eyes, spontaneous horizontal nystagmus, and it is history is almost confirmatory. If patient comes in a later stage by head shake test or even absent calvary response test, we can diagnose this condition. In initial treatment will be a central sedative that we give. We can give vestibular sedative, and these are the patient who ultimately require vestibular rehabilitation exercises. Remember, I've seen patients with all those ex doing exercise, even BPPV, they don't require exercise on the vestibular neuritis. Patients require vestibular rehabilitation exercises. Coming to Meniere's disease, it is mainly triad of three symptoms. This is the only ear condition with vertigo where patient will have common cause of vertigo, where patient will have a hearing loss, patient will have a ringing sound in the ear. He will say that I am getting a blocked ear along with vertigo. So vertigo, reduced hearing, ringing sound in the ear and ear becomes full, blocked sensation happens in the ear. This is mainly because the fluid in the endolymph, it, the pressure in the fluid increases and this leads to these symptoms. So typically patient will have a rotatory kind of vertigo for a long, it can be for a few minutes to few hours and typically tinnitus, that is ringing sound, hearing loss, and vertigo will be diagnostic of Meniere's disease clinically. Again, initial acute conditions, we reassure the patient, give him good bed rest. If patient is, on, is taking too much of tea, coffee, smoking, stress, reduce those things, reduce the activities or movement of the body. Give patient initial stages of severe vertigo, whether vestibular neuritis or Meniere's, give him a good dose of prochlorperazine, um, either injectable or tablets, depending on the patient's condition. And long term, these patients might require vasodilator in the form of beta histine. In Meniere's disease, we also give, give intratympanic, that is a small injection called gentamicin in the ear. And this injection is very safe. We have done studies. It does not affect the hearing at all. We can give inj injectable gentamicin in the ear. And it does have a role if patients are not benefiting with medical treatment. 
there are some surgi other surgical treatment also but they are very uh, that they are too much of intervention is there not going into details of those but intratympanic gentamicin should be tried in many years patient if the patient is not responding to medical treatment there are various yes, drugs which are commonly used in vertigo they can be prochlorpyrazine there are promethazine there is diazepam beta histine so these are mainly for symptomatic treatment and beta histine can be used for increasing or basically increasing the blood supply to the ear so depending on the kind kind of the vertigo depending on the diagnosis of patient different medicines might be used in can be used in different in the typical doses commonly used is prochlorpyrazine any patient who is watching this who is having severe vertigo they should keep this prochlorpyrazine tablets with them in severe episodes of vertigo a 5 mg sublingual dose should be used this can reduce the vertigo besides beta histine is good uh, it can be it, it is given in it can be given in higher doses as well more than 40 it can also be given now it increases the blood circulation it can lead to minimal headache and some gastritis cinarazine is also a drug which is commonly used can be used twice or thrice depending on patient symptom it can lead to some amount of drowsiness so it is important that we assess the patient very well, especially in a specialized ENT center. We can assess the patient, especially in, in the terms of nystagmus. We can do a dick solpac test. We do an audiometry to assess the hearing. Underburger test is done. We also do caloric test, nystagmography, rotation test. These are various tests to diagnose the vertigo, what exactly is the cause. But all vertigo patient, it is important that we rule out systemic conditions like diabetes, anemia, heart conditions, migraine, vascular disease like hypertension, postural hypertension is important that patients should not be on any major ear affecting drugs on depression medicines or hypotensions, hypotensive medications. So these are problems need to be ruled out and these can also, the patient can also present with dizziness. It is also important that as a medical practitioner, we allay the anxiety of the patient because anxiety can always increase this dizziness issues. This chart is important way to understand what exactly is the cause and reaching diagnosis and then starting treatment would be ideal in cases of vertigo. Remember one take home message, more than one hour continuous vertigo, I would think MRI has a role to rule out the brain or cerebellar lesion. If the vertigo is lasting for few a few seconds only, less than one minute, and only in specific posture, BPPV is the common cause and it is 100 percent treatable with the exercise maneuver without any medication with all this hopefully we will reach to a diagnosis because seeing a patient of vertigo is a very dreadful thing and patient is in, in too much of stress we need to diagnose and then start treating the patient uh, thank you so much hope this uh, helps in understanding the uh, concepts of vertigo and um, and starting the treatment based on actual diagnosis